Okay, so today we're gonna be giving you an idea of what we're gonna be planting on the new property. That's coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today, it's September 2019. So you guys know we've got a big move coming up here. We're gonna be moving from the current farm onto our new six acres of flat desert land and essentially starting all over again. So, you know, we, we're, we've got a hundred fruit trees here on the property. You know, we've been documenting this for the last couple of years and the growth that we've seen, um, but you know, we haven't shown you why we choose some of the varieties that we choose um, and how we go through that process. So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today. Um, I am going to post our last video that we um, put up. This is actually our visit to RSI growers and talking to Reed. And that's really what kind of is the beginning for us. So what we're doing now is we're actually putting together a list of trees specifically for Reed and of course for ourselves to give him an idea of what we're looking for. So, you know, a big advantage that we have is, you know, we're already looking at about 150 trees. My guess is by the time we're done, we're going to be topping out at about 200 trees or so uh, over the next year or two that we're going to be putting into the ground to get that farm started. So with Reed, we have the opportunity to go after specific varieties that he's going to actually grow out for us um, in the quantities that we're looking for. And what we're really trying to do now is determine hey, what exactly do we want based on what we've learned here? So we wanted to kind of share that process with you. First thing I want to do is talk a little bit about why we're choosing what we're choosing. So, you know, really the primary reason is production. You know, we really want the trees that we have to produce well for us. That's the whole idea is to is to get good production off of our trees. Now, the predominant reason for that is obviously very, very selfish. It's for us. <laughs> we want those fruits specifically for us because we do enjoy consuming fruits. We lose, use them lots of different ways, uh, but production really is our number one focus. What What's going to give us the most bang for our buck what's going to give us the most fruit production um, and that's really kind of where we focus so next thing would be time commitment you know when we're choosing our varieties we want to choose varieties that are not going to require a lot of time and input on our part at least once we get them established so in the ground and they get going we really don't want to have to nurse our trees along so that is definitely something that we're keeping in mind you know Lori and i we work full time both of us do so this is definitely a part-time thing for us um, you know how we do sell some so there, there is a, a side business kind of a side hustle aspect to it for us at least at this point as well but for the most part we need to be able to come out here get what we need to get done and then move on you know fruit trees we got fruit trees is one of the things that we're gonna have on that farm but we have veggies we've got a vineyard we're gonna have livestock so we've got a whole lot of things going on and we need to make sure we can manage all of our time and one of those things is choosing varieties that we don't need to nurse along so that's definitely something we're keeping in mind so of course a big advantage that we have here on this property is we've learned a lot so a couple overarching things that we've learned uh, number one would be our climate here in Whitman is slightly different from what you guys would have in the Phoenix area so specifically in the city you guys are gonna be about five or six degrees warmer than we are out here in Whitman so your lows are a little bit higher um, and of course your highs are a little bit higher so you know we're dealing with a little bit more of an extreme condition out here where we still get 120 degree days but we also get down to 20 at night so we got that last year killed off a few varieties that we thought were gonna make it and would make it for you guys with some work in the city so you know that definitely crossed is out tropicals for us um, not that we're not going to still kind of play with that fine line as far as cold hardiness is concerned we do have some ideas on some more cold hardy tropical varieties but generally speaking we are not going to do tropicals on that property there's too much of a time commitment and production they're not going to give us the production that we want so again back to those two key things for us um, so you won't see a whole lot of that uh, here on this farm or on the new one Conversely, there are things that thrive in this variation in climate uh, that do really, really well under those circumstances. And of course, that's where we're gonna key in. So for this video and the next couple of videos you're gonna see, what we really wanna do is kind of wrap up the farm here and what we're taking with us as far as varieties onto the new property. So what I wanna do today is I wanna go over the categories we're gonna be covering 
and categories that we're definitely going to be planting over there. And we will going, be going into detail about one specifically today. So that's what we're going to kind of do next. I'm starting here for a reason, and that reason is stone fruit. So what you see on either side of me here, I think, is a good example of stone fruit and how wonderful they do here in this climate. So I have a peach tree here. Um, you can see a beautiful two and a half year old peach tree uh, that's doing very, very well. Um, you can see it grows just beautifully. Um, here in this climate and then over to my left hand side you're gonna see an apricot tree doing very very well this one's about four years old um, but it looks like it's just a beautiful looking tree so next thing would be pomegranates kind of a category in and of themselves um, pomegranates do really really well here in the Arizona desert they're really they thrive in this climate so that's kind of a no-brainer we will definitely have pomegranates going forward fig trees you guys know we do a lot of videos on fig trees got a lot of people interested in fig trees we will definitely be doing fig trees on the new property lots of variety options there that we'll be discussing so next thing would be pome fruit that's p-o-m-e that's going to include your apples you'll see our golden dorset behind me here so your apples and your pears we will definitely be bringing apples and pears with us then of course citrus we are here in arizona we will definitely be taking multiple varieties of citrus with us berries we will definitely be taking berries with us what you see behind me here would be mulberries and blackberries so we'll be discussing different mulberry and blackberry varieties nut trees we are going to have a couple different Different varieties of nuts what you see behind me here is our all-in-one almond but we will be putting nut trees in on the new property and of course grapes we will have a vineyard so we're definitely going to be having grapes and grape varieties on the new property so I think what I'm going to do now I really would like to give you guys a breakdown on one category in particular today so we kind of get started over the under the next couple of videos and I'm going to go ahead and start with grapes we've had a lot of questions on grapes here because we've covered them multiple times in the past now what I really want to do is I really want to focus on varieties that of course we're going to be taking with us but also varieties that I think would do really really well for anybody so from the amateur that's going to have one in this case vine or tree to somebody who's going to be starting an orchard of their own so what i want to do well, let's go ahead and jump right into grapes so we've talked about grapes several times and i'm going to go ahead and link a playlist here that we cover grapes kind of in more detail than we're going to here today but what i did want to talk about would be the grape varieties we're growing the grape varieties that we're planning on growing and why we actually have multiple grape varieties here. What you see behind me here would be our flame grapes. That's a red seedless grape. What you see to my right would be our black manukas. Our black manuka grapes are a black grape, as it implies. Really, it's kind of a red grape. Um, those actually have seeds, so it's a seeded variety, but extremely sweet, very good tasting fruit. What you can't see on the back side of our garden area here would be our Thompson grapes. So we carry Thompson seedless grapes. Those are green grapes, nice big grape that are green, uh, would make a white wine if you're going to be turning it into wine um, also on our arbor we've covered that before we have an arizona canyon grape um, so and a unique variety here to arizona actually grows naturally around the sedona area we have a princess grape a single vine of a princess grape <laughs> that's right across from that grape on the arbor so we have several varieties here that we're testing out so let's break down what we're taking with us what we're not going to take with us and what we're still going to try out First and foremost, as far as your go-to grape variety here in Arizona, hands down would be a flame grape. If you're not doing flame seedless grapes and you're here in our environment, you're making a mistake in my opinion unless you just don't like red grapes <laughs> so if you really want a green grape go with your thompson's but if you're going to plant one grape variety you want it to do well um, be fairly easy to maintain and give you an abundant harvest flame grapes are going to be your go-to grape variety they grow very strongly it doesn't matter how you grow them you can grow them on an arbor you can grow them the way we do here which is a trellising system you know honestly you could probably just let them go as a bush if you really wanted to um, but a very very good productive tree that's easy to maintain so you kind of see why it's our favorite tree uh, second one would probably be your Thompson grapes your Thompson seedless grapes would be a green variety gives you nice big long clusters very very productive it's very sweet although not quite as sweet as flame seedless in my opinion um, however it would give you a little bit of an extended harvest because your flame grapes are gonna ripen first your Thompson grapes will ripen second so a good extended season if you're wanting a couple different grape varieties the third one that we're going to be taking with us and it's for a specific purpose would be the Arizona Canyon grapes so we will be planting Arizona Canyon grapes 
on the new property and those specifically are actually going to be for vining we're really not giving getting them for fruit production so i'm kind of breaking my first rule as far as production um, however we can use them um, as an adjunct or an additive into our red wines if we wanted to um, so it can be utilized for production um, however it's really going to be for aesthetics around our vineyard and more specifically we're going to use them to grow on arbors and trellises and things like that around the property a couple things that we're definitely not going to do uh, or at least we're leaning towards skipping. Um, the first one would be the Black Manuka. Now the Black Manuka has done okay. It's done a fair amount of production for us, although not really, really high. A second thing would be ease of use. It's actually not as easy to train to prune uh, and even harvesting can be a little bit difficult on your black manuka. Uh, we found that the pruning in and of itself is tough. It can be either cane pruned or spur pruned. Um, however, we've done it both ways and not seen a whole lot of benefit to either one. The shoots when they come off of it, so when you get your new vine growth uh, early in the season, they're very brittle. They break off very, very easily. Uh, we lost a lot of clusters just trying to train the vine up to that six foot level. So that difficulty, so you know, key point number two for us, which is ease of, uh, of upkeep, that black manuka struggles a little bit with that. So that one's kind of on the fence. The princess grape has not done well at all for us. Uh, we had a couple of uh, ripe fruit off of it this year. Um, however, it just did not do very well. So looking at probably replacing a couple of those varieties, you know, one of the things for us here is we want to have a vineyard. We want to have wine production coming off of the farm, uh, mainly for personal personal use. We really enjoy red wines, so we're really kind of researching now a couple of different varieties that we can add to that wine making assortment for us. A couple that are kind of coming off uh, off of some of the tests done in U of A would be Lambrusco. Lori really likes her Lambrusco uh, wine, which is a red wine. Uh, also uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, so we're considering maybe a Cabernet. Uh, so that's an, an option for us. But there's a couple different red grapes that I think we're going to test out, maybe put in eight to ten vines and and see if we can get some red wine production off of the farm. So your two primary grape varieties here in the Arizona area would be number one, your flame red seedless grape, a fantastic eating grape, very high production, very easy to take care of. Second will be your Thompson. So if you want a good green or white grape variety, your Thompson seedless grapes would be a fantastic grape. If you're gonna do a couple, put both of those in and then red or white, you can choose either one. I think if you're gonna choose just one grape. So really wanted to give you guys an overview today of where we're headed over the next couple of episodes as we move on to the new property, deciding what we're going to be planting on that new property. Really wanted you to be here with us. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down in the comment section, but also suggestions. If you guys have any suggestions, definitely want to see those as well. As you're seeing some of the things that we're talking about here, especially over the next few episodes, would really love to get your guys' input. So definitely would love to see that down in the comments. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon page, I'll leave a link down in the description. A free painless way to help support the channel is you start your shopping there the next time you're shopping on Amazon. It doesn't matter what you buy. If you start with that link, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. That's... What is Interesting. that? Is that a That's frog? a snake. That's a snake in there. That grabbed a frog. Holy crap, I need a picture. That is crazy. Oh my goodness. That is a snake that's got a hole of a frog through the hole in the irrigation box. He's gonna land on me. Okay, this is my arch nemesis these days. That is a Japanese beetle. These little guys really enjoy, well, landing on my forehead and uh, you know, they will eat your crops. Um, these guys are in their mating season right now, I think. And that's actually what puts those little white grubs uh, in the ground. But these guys, uh, yeah, not a big fan. You ain't, no, no, uh-uh. Okay, that's one for the blooper reel. <laughs>